Peter Pollock and this is how to upgrade your computer with an SSD drive. Now a couple of disclaimers first and, and what have you. It is possible to damage your computer when you're trying to do manual upgrades. Uh, you do need to be careful, you should use anti-static precautions and you should always be careful with what you're touching um, and everything you're doing. To demonstrate that just a little, here's one that I destroyed earlier. Uh, no idea what happened. I was happily playing with adding things to it and everything and it went kaput. Can't fix it. Tried everything I could. So instead, we're going to use this bad boy. This is a, uh, I don't know, it's an HP. It's an HP computer. This is uh, one that I've got from the school that I teach at. And what we found with these computers at the school is they're going a little slow, but we can't afford to replace 50 computers in the school. We just don't have the resources for that. So we need to find ways to upgrade them, speed them up to make them a little more usable. So what I'm, I'm doing today is I'm showing you how we're going to do that with SSD drives. Now, the first thing we have to do is take the lid off and then we'll get to it. So, what we're going to be using for this is one of these Kingston SSD Now V300 SSD drives. Now this is a, a lovely kit that they, they sell. Um, I saw it, this is the 240 version, so it's about $85 in Staples at the moment. Uh, there's a 120 gigabyte version, which is more like $65. It's a wonderful kit, it comes with everything you need, and I'll show you what those things are. Here we have the main items in the kit. There is the SSD drive, obviously. Uh, there is a SATA cable connector to connect it to your computer. Then you've got uh, a disk with some install instructions and some very important software. And then you have this external drive carrier. Now this is useful if you're uh, upgrading a laptop or even some PCs which the manufacturer has made difficult to upgrade. You simply slot the SSD drive into there and there you have uh, a USB pluggable SSD drive so you can plug that to any USB port on your computer and you can do the upgrade using that. There are also other useful things in the package such as this. This is a uh, three and a half inch adapter for the two and a half inch disk drive. They are made, I call it a disk drive, it's not a disk drive, it's an SSD drive. They are made uh, to fit inside laptops which use a standard two and a half inch size, but PCs require a three and a half inch, so you would simply bolt that onto your adapter to use it inside your PC. Okay, I already took the lid off this PC. Um, the way you take the cases off is different on every single case, to, just depending on how the manufacturer made it. This had a, a handle on the top, which I just had to flip up. Some of them you will have screws in the back and some of them will be tower PCs, so the side will come off. Some of them are desktops, so maybe the top will come off. Some of them the, the whole sides and top will come off. It, it's all different. Have a look on the back of your, your case. There's generally a handle or a clip or an obvious screw or something that you can see you need to move to get it off. Here's my uh, my case and somehow I've got to find somewhere in here to put my new SSD drive which is uh, going to be going on its three and a half inch adapter because I'm, I'm putting it inside a PC. So in this case I can see these little uh, green arrows are telling me that I can move stuff so this was really nicely made and I can just move things apart uh, to get to what I need. Now down here is my original hard disk drive and we'll see over on this side there is a slot here where I could put a secondary hard disk drive in. The uh, CD-ROM drive is up at the back here. So, so I will simply install my SSD drive in here. I'll have to move these wires to do so. Slot it in uh, and it will require one screw 
in the side to hold it in place. Yours may require different numbers of screws, it will be one screw in either side. But once it's installed, I will show you what we do then. Okay, the drive is installed now, so what we need to do is connect up the cables. The first thing you need to see is that there are SATA connections down here on the motherboard. Now, they may be a little difficult to find, but you can easily trace the route to them. And this is how you do it. Uh, find one of your drives, this is my CD-ROM drive, I, I took the, the cable out the back of it, if you remember, um, but if I follow the, the smaller one of the cables down and follow it around, it will show me that it comes down, all the way down to here. Um, so I can see that these are my SATA connections, and so I have two already, one for my hard disk drive and one for my CD-ROM. So two connections in there and there's two spares. So what I'm going to do is grab my new red cable from Kingston. Why do I use Kingston products? You know, I've been using them for 15 years or so and I really have not had many problems with them at all. Um, I enjoy their reliability, I trust them. I'm sure that other uh, SSD drives are, are just as good, but I can only speak from experience with Kingston, and Kingston is definitely a name I would trust. So I've plugged in my, my SATA cable, and I'll plug back the one into the CD drive. Make sure that's in there. And then we'll plug the power cable back into the CD drive. So this one with the uh, red, yellow and black, that's the power cable. Just make sure that's pushed in securely. Now what you'll see is there's an additional power cable, uh, power connector along that cable and that is the one we're going to use for our SSD. So everything's back in place, we just have to put the lid on, sometimes these can be a bit tricky, just making sure you get all the catches in the right place. And there we go, the lid's back on, and we're ready to do the upgrade. So I have plugged all my cables back into the computer, obviously connected it back up to the monitor, and I put the DVD in the DVD-ROM drive, so we're now booting off of that. And it's gonna come up with this loading screen. Uh, at the bottom it tells me I can boot from Windows, which is what is on my uh, computer already or I can select my language to go into this Acronis True Image HD software. Now what this is going to do is this is going to clone the hard drive and it's going to create an exact copy of my current hard drive on the SSD drive so that then I can remove the, the current hard drive and just boot off of the SSD drive and everything will work exactly as it did before because it's an exact clone. So it's taking just a moment to boot up and there we go, it's booted, I have mouse control. Now I did find earlier I was using a wireless mouse and keyboard from Microsoft and this program did not recognize the mouse and keyboard uh, so I had to use another one. I'm using a Logitech mouse and keyboard and everything is fine. What I'm going to do is go to clone disk and we can just do automatic. Now, disk one is the one that I currently, I originally had in, and you can see it gives you the model name, so just so you can be sure which one you're backing up, uh, just make sure you get it right. Disk one uh, here is a WDC drive, um, and it shows me that disk two is the Kingston SV300, uh, 240 gigabytes so we know that disk one is the one that I'm def definitely supposed to be coming from that's my source disk so I'll select that now if you've never used your SSD drive before it will not have it in the list here uh, as you go to the next page it will then come up with disk two and it'll say it's uninitiated do you want to use it and you just say yes so I'm going to select disk two 
as my destination drive. Uh, now all it's telling me is that I've already got some data on disk two. That's because I've already done this copy uh, once or twice just to test how it works for making this video. So I'm just gonna say okay to delete everything. Then it's asking me, do I wanna copy the partitions without changes or do I want to copy them and make it non-bootable? What I could do is copy them as a backup. Um, I won't be able to boot off that drive, but then I will have a, a complete backup copy, but that's not a whole lot of use. So instead, I'm going to copy the partitions without any changes, which will make the new drive a bootable drive. Click Next. It just goes through one, one more time. It tells you, before, we're talking about drive D here, so the, uh, the destination disk, the disk we're going to, is going to start at 223 gigabytes and it's going to have about that much used. And it's going to end with the same amount used. Uh, the reason it's showing me an amount used is because I do already have data on there, because I've already done this copy once. Yours will show you that there's no data on it and it will show you how much data will be used afterwards. And then simply click proceed and it starts. How long it takes depends on your computer hardware and how much data you've got on the drive. So I'll let this run and I'll rejoin you when it's done. And it's done. Now you have two choices. The easy way to do this is to just open up the PC again, switch it off first obviously. Open up the PC, take out the old drive and just run with the new drive. The slightly harder way lets you keep both drives in there and I'll show you how to do it. To do it the slightly harder way, we need to restart the computer and go into BIOS. So we need to click on the X to get out of this program, then it will automatically reboot the computer for us. Now, to get into BIOS on a computer, you're going to have to hit a key almost as soon as the computer starts up. It should come up with a flash screen saying whatever manufacturer it is. At that point, you need to be hitting the appropriate key to go into BIOS. Now, that key on the keyboard could be uh, one of a number of different things, depending on your manufacturer. Some people, some manufacturers use the delete key, some use F12, I've seen F10, I've seen escape, I've seen F1. The best thing to do is to search on your manufacturer's website and find out what key they use. Um, say, how do you enter BIOS, B-I-O-S, BIOS, on whatever computer it is or it may pop up on the screen as you're switching on and you'll be able to see it. On my screen, it pops up and says I can press F10 to get into this boot menu, which is really nice. And I can go in there and I can select in here to go in and edit the BIOS. So I'm gonna go in here. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is just have a look at the devices and you can just um, navigate with the uh, arrow keys up, down, left, right. Yours may look slightly different from this. Essentially, it will be the same thing. What you're going to do is you're going to go through and find where it lists the devices. And you'll see here, I've got the WDC device, which it calls SATA 0, and my Kingston device, which it calls SATA 1. Now that's important because we're gonna go into the boot order now. If we go back from that, go down here to the boot order and if we scroll down here, you'll see that SATA 0 is the first hard drive in order. It's got the CD-ROM coming before that, but the first hard drive it will look at is SATA 0. Now SATA 0 is our old hard drive, and we don't want it booting off that. So I'm going to switch these over so that SATA 1 is the boot device, and that way it will boot off of my new SSD drive. Now. It will run Windows off of my SSD drive, but the other drive is still installed. So Windows will still be able to see it. What you can do once you get into Windows is then 
wipe the hard drive, keeping the SSD drive so then you've got a nice blank hard drive that you can use for whatever you want. I would suggest using that for your data storage, just have your programs and windows on the SSD and all your pictures and documents and videos and everything else on the second drive. To get out of BIOS we just have to find uh, where in the menu system it gives you the option to exit and save. We've got to make sure we save and then the computer will boot up. Now as you see this is booting very quickly. It takes about 15 seconds now to boot from uh, pushing the, the power button. Previously when I was using the old hard drive it took 25 seconds to boot. It now takes 15 so that's taken a good 10 seconds off of my boot time which makes it a whole lot easier to to deal with. I tested on some of the programs as well. Um, it actually took quite a while for Word to load on these computers. It would take uh, 20 or 25 seconds for it to load. It now takes between 10 and 12 seconds to load. So just by changing from a hard drive to an SSD drive I've got a great increase in speed and these computers have a, a new breath of life. I hope this has been helpful to you. Please leave a comment, ask any questions if you need to and I will do my best to answer them as quickly as possible and keep your eyes open for my next video. Thank you.